Oh man, how's it going everybody? Welcome back. You may be saying to yourself, Drew, what have you gotten yourself into this time? Well, today we are building a guitar. And as you can see by this B-reel, after I CNC cut out the body, we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. But this nice little B-reel to show you some up close shots of me sanding the guitar and how that's kind of smoothing out the body. Most woodworkers will tell you that to sand something like this, you use a progressive sanding schedule, and that's what I did here. I believe I started with like an 80 grit sandpaper just to get everything shaped out the way that I wanted, and then progressed through 120 and then to 220 to get everything kind of smoothed out and feeling smooth. And then after that, we move straight into staining the guitar, but not without stacking up some stuff. I like stacking things. Maybe it's the Asperger's or the autism in me. I know a lot of kiddos with Asperger's or autism like to stack stuff, and I'm no different. Also, I have a little siphon spray gun that I got on Amazon for 30 bucks, which we're going to be using to spray this finish. And as you can see, I'm using RIT dye, which I had kind of laying around and I wanted to try out. I've seen online that you can use RIT dye to stain a guitar, but there's a caveat, and you're going to see it right here, that if you're going to stain a guitar with RIT dye, Definitely don't do it through an HVLP gun because the pressure and how thin the RIT dye is, it just immediately aerosolizes and you get like this big old cloud and it's sometimes hard to put down finish consistently. Ideally, you want your finish to be a little bit thicker than this, but you'll notice that there's some runs that'll happen. You'll probably see it when I flip the guitar around here in a second. Look along the right side near the pickup cavity. You'll see a little blotch. Yeah, you see the runs along the left side there. This dye is just really really thin and it runs <laughs> so yeah not the best choice i would say for dyeing if you're gonna dye with rit dye on a guitar i would definitely do a wipe on sort of thing so get a rag and wipe it into the guitar manually but i like using an hvlp gun just because in my research it's shown that you can get a lot smoother transition between colors on finishes and stuff like that but i'm leaving this in because I am not a professional luthier, at least not yet. Hopefully one day I can build guitars that are awesome and people want to buy, but in the process of getting there, it is all about showing you guys the little mistakes that I make along the way so that I can share those experiences with you and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. And yeah, as you can see in that be real there that you saw some of the blotching. So what I'm doing here is I'm just scuffing down the finish and trying to level it out with some quadruple O steel wool. And then I actually sprayed some red, but as you can see, it looks kind of like a crime scene with those splotches. But again, no worries. Quadruple O steel wool to the rescue. I was able to scotch and kind of level down the finish. And we still got a little bit of splotching, but it looks a lot, a lot better than the first time, let me assure you. So off camera, I also did a third coat with a brown on the outside. So now we have a three-tone sunburst and I sanded it down to 400 grit. And now we get into lacquering but not without the obligatory stack. You know, whenever we come over to the paint station, we got to stack some stuff up. And look at that. I actually got the vise from my drill press involved. And then, oh, there we go. Big old thumbs up. Got the cans balanced on top. So let's talk about lacquer. So the lacquer that I use is just a standard nitrocellulose lacquer. I like nitro because it has a nice kind of marshmallow smell to it when you spray it, and it leaves a nice aroma around the guitar. Um, so when it comes to lacquer and spraying lacquer, in my research, what I've found is that what you want is basically, and this is for all sort of liquids that you put through an HVLP gun, but you want to have the consistency of like water. So as you can see, when I pull the stick out, there's like the dripping from the lacquer. It comes out in like a nice stream. You can see that if it comes out drippy where it has like a lot of drops and it's not one consistent stream, you're going to want to thin that out. And the way that you do that is you do one part lacquer to one part lacquer thinner and you just keep adding lacquer thinner until it gets to the consistency you want, stirring along the way. But thankfully, this lacquer was actually, I don't know if it was pre-thinned or if it was conditioned for spraying, but it was pretty much the consistency that I wanted. So I just dropped it into my spray gun and we were off to the races, but not before doing a little test spray or a little test squirt. We'll see it here in just a second. Wait for it. There it is. Alrighty, we're all set to go. So this first coat that I'm going to put down is what's called a tack coat. It's basically just a quick coat on top of the surface to allow the 
lacquer to fill in some of those micro holes or those micro pores that maybe aren't as level. And then I wait about 30 minutes to an hour to put down a second coat and I basically build up layers of coats. I think I did seven on this guitar and it gives it that nice kind of glossy, I call this the light test where you see the light go right over the top of the guitar. But we have a problem. So here on the left, you'll see my Made in Mexico Strat and on the right, the one that we're building. And it's a lot smaller, actually. So what I found out is that my CNC machine wasn't calibrated correctly. So I went online or I went on to Fusion 360 where I designed everything and took some measurements and got it all calibrated and we recut the body. And so we're kind of starting not from square one, but oh, also I print 3D printed this holder that drills into it so that when you put it on the stand, which I also built, you can rotate it around and spray. So fast forwarding a little bit, we got the thing stained and we also sprayed seven coats of lacquer on this one, but you'll notice that we have some orange peeling. You'll notice the surface of the guitar there looks like an orange peel. So the way we fix that is just by wet sanding with 400 grit all the way up to about six or 800 grit. So that's what I'm doing right here. It's worth noting that orange peeling typically happens. It just has to deal with the weather in which you spray and the conditions. So unless you're in like a $30,000 spray booth or something like that, you're gonna get a little bit of orange peeling, but it's easily fixed just with some wet sanding. You can see we have this kind of cloudy texture in the top of the guitar. And the way that we'll get to fixing that is through polishing. So as you can see, I have here a four compound polishing sort of schedule. I think I got this on Amazon from the chemical guys. And first thing I tried was using my drill press with this little pad that they provide to you. Well, actually I think I bought the pad separately, but yeah, it didn't work on the drill press just because the drill press didn't have the kind of torque that I was looking for. So back to the orbital sander, <laughs> by far one of the most useful tools in my workbench. So as you can see here, I'm just kind of giving this thing a polish and it gets nice and shiny you're going to see some b-real here in just a second where it gets really reflective now an orbital sander isn't going to do as well as like a buffing wheel and i do end up picking a buffing up a buffing wheel and rebuffing this in the next part but this video is already running a little bit long so i'm just going to hit you guys with some b-real and then we're going to head over to live drew to wrap things up and take us out so without further ado live drew the video is yours So there it is after round one, which is what I'm calling initial fabrication. So also sorry for the uh, congestion. It just got really cold here in Texas. And so I'm dealing with some drainage, but yeah, it polished up about as best as I can mention. There's some dust here in the finish as well. So like I mentioned in the voiceover, like having a buffing wheel, like a dedicated buffing wheel would definitely help. So I'm definitely going to get one of those before final assembly, but maybe you guys can see it a little bit here. There's a little bit of dust there. And I like kind of the natural edge that this has. Pine has a very kind of varicose, I guess you could say, or striated kind of green structure. So you get this kind of like ridging around it, which I think Fender did a couple of those prototypes for like Jim Root. I remember on a, get, a rig rundown that he was doing on Premier Guitars that he had some kind of natural finish pine with like that kind of striated effect or simulated like veiny striated effect. So I'm pretty happy with it. But like I said, a good buff will help and I will definitely get a buff before final polishing. But as best I could get with like just some basic car polish and a uh, an orbital sander, I'm pretty happy with this. The neck feels good. I Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Okay, back to voiceover, Drew. You hear me mention the neck in this clip, and we did build a neck in this video, but I intentionally left it out because there's going to be a lot of explanation in the next video. The neck was kind of a, a whole shenanigan on its own, and it's going to all be explained in part two. So make sure you are subscribed. There is a second part to this video coming out where I explain the neck situation. But for now, just pretend like we had a section where we cut out a neck and put it on this. So, yeah. Back to you, Live Drew. Obviously, we're gonna, on the back here, you can see I've just kind of set the neck to start, but I'm gonna redrill some holes and get some more threaded inserts so it sits more securely. But I mean, it feels good. It feels good in the hands. I feel like once we add a, uh, a fretboard and kind of finish down the neck, um, it'll 
be just as smooth as a baby's butt and pull this old boy will sing. So, or girl, or non-binary pal. It's kind of weird to me how some people will uh, name their guitars or give them genders, but uh, I don't know. It's just how people build <laughs> the, uh, the bond with their instrument, I guess. So I don't know if it's a he, she, or an it, but it's my guitar <laughs> and, or one of a few. And it's just been really cool to work on a project like this. And this, like I said, in the voiceover, this has been something that I've been dreaming of for years is being able to build my own guitars. And so we're getting one step closer to that dream, but naturally we still have a lot of work to do. We got to cut a pick guard. We've got to do some electronic work. There's some tweaks that I'm going to make on this particular build, but we'll leave that for another video because this one has already lasted long enough. And so I'll wrap up in the normal way. And that's by me saying, always remember friends that you are wanted, you are loved and you are appreciated. You have a special talent that nobody else has, and the world is waiting on you to bring it out. So muster a little courage, go out into the world, and change it. That's what the world's waiting on. You. Till next time.